The labor of the late Reverend Henry Townsend and other missionaries have birthed 14 ecclesiastical provinces composed of 165 dioceses in the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion as at 2010, the last of which is the Diocese of Idoani, inaugurated in January 15, 2010. This is indeed the celebration of God with us, Emmanuel, our Anglican experience. As I have just read from Isaiah 61, we are trusting God that that seed which he sowed in this holy place, the land of Badagri, which over the years have grown, touching lives, changing societies and communities, will continue to grow and bear much more fruit to the glory of our God. May that be our experience in the name of Jesus Christ. The fight against slavery and indeed, the beginning of a new dawn led to the establishment of Freetown, Sierra Leone, by the British government. And the freed slaves and were resettled in Freetown. And as they were being resettled, the missionaries joined in the building of a new community. The seed of this gospel was sown among these freed slaves and many turned their lives over to the Lord. Some of them made their ways back home to Badagri, Onta Biokuta and other parts of the country. Badagri, which was indeed the exit point of many slaves and the point of no return marked the nursery of the new dawn. God turned things around. The place of mourning and weeping became a place of new things happening and raising of new lives that turned the new dawn. Abiyokuta became the gateway for a new move of God and the raising of a new people which led to the creation of a new nation, Nigeria. Samuel Ajay Crowder, a former slave and other pioneer missionaries became God's agents who God used to rebuild a new generation, to rebuild the old ruins and cities, and indeed agents of a new dispensation. And so today, as we gather, we are celebrating God's faithfulness in turning Badagri from the place where many mourned to be the place we can celebrate as the beginning of a new thing that God is doing, the birth of a people, the birth of the church, and the birth of a new nation, Nigeria. And in this I will say, we have two major waves of God's move. The first wave is the mission, activities and enterprise of the early missionaries in which God used people like Thomas Birch Freeman and Henry Townsend, Ajay Crowder and so many unsung heroes 
of the Christian faith to start a new beginning through missions, education, health mission work, agriculture, trade and commerce, politics and the civil service. And as we look at the most impacting we can see missions being carried out in the principle enunciated by Henry Vance, that astute administrator of missions for the CMS, who propounded the principles of a national church that would be self-propagating self-supporting and self-governing and these principles were executed by Bishop Ajay Crowder and those who worked with him and through this mission education was used as an instrument of mission and the building of a people a new people of God. Through them, health mission was established, not only in establishment of early mission hospitals, but the training and empowering of our sons and daughters and the helping of those that are in need, agriculture, trade and commerce, and indeed preparing a people for the leadership of a, an imagined nation. One cannot speak of the modern day Nigeria without thinking of the negotiations that Bishop Ajay Crowder had with paramount rulers of different communities from the east to the south south to the north central and other parts of Nigeria. We can also speak of the second wave. The second wave was begun on the 24th February, 1979, which was the birth of the province of the Church of Nigeria under the leadership of our first Archbishop, Archbishop Timothy Olufosoye. From 1979 to 1989. And under him, we can see the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion growing in leaps and bounds, expanding in the creation of more dioceses and the strengthening of the mission of the church. We also saw under Archbishop Joseph Adetti Loye from 1989 to 1999 and visionary leader of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. The decade of evangelism was proclaimed by him and fully executed, resulting in the creation of missionary dioceses with his slogan of where there is a governor, there should be a bishop. And this led to the expansion of the church. He also worked hard to see that the national church was fully funded. He established the eminent Anglican group and other ways of raising funds to run the church of Nigeria. We can also see that after him, Archbishop Peter Jasper Akiola from 2000 to 2010, his leadership of this church brought great expansion and impact, not only in the Church of Nigeria, but beyond our shores, impacting on the Universal Church. Thus, under him, we can see expansion of mission, creation of more dioceses focusing on hinterlands, 
Focusing on creation of more dioceses in the hinterlands and which impact we can see that the diocese of Badagri was a beneficiary because on September 24, 2004, the diocese of Badagri was created out of the diocese of Lagos West. And indeed, this was a rebuilding of where the gospel was first preached in Nigeria. And that seed sown on the 24th of September 2004 has grown and will continue to grow. And we thank God for the bishop and the clergy and the people of Badagri Diocese. Bishop Adeemi, the Lord will continue to strengthen you and your people as you grow this baby diocese into strong, mature diocese. The hand of the Lord will be upon you. And we are indeed very grateful for accepting the challenge to host us in this celebration of the 180 years of the replanting of Christianity in Nigeria. Under Baba Akiola, we can also see and testify to the contending for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints, as he with all the church fathers battled against homosexuality and Western cultural heresy of our time. And through him, God founded GAFCON, strengthened the global south, and gave it a direction. Under him, the ASCC received direction. And in fact, the first All African Conference of Bishops was held in Lagos West, Ikeja, and we thank God for what God did through him in giving direction for the ministry of the gospel and the church of God. Baba Akiola also worked on funding the national church by the establishment of the endowment of the church of Nigeria. He also served this church and the church of God in ecumenism through impactful leadership under whose leadership the completion of the National Khan Center was done, completed, and dedicated. We also want to thank God that through his visionary leadership, National Church Administration was stabilized. There were constitutional changes that actually shaped the image of the Church of Nigeria and our self-understanding, our relationship to the uh, Canterbury, the Sea of Canterbury, and who we define ourselves to be. Under him, the national headquarters of our church was moved from wherever to be at Abuja, and there were so many other impactful leadership that he has bequeathed to this church. After Baba Akiola, Archbishop Nicholas D. Oko has led this church from 2010 to 2020, and we thank God that under him, the Lord has strengthened the mission of this church by strengthening the missionary dioceses through the establishment of St. Matthias Collection in order to help fund our struggling missionary dioceses. Deepening the spirituality of this church through DIFCON and other spiritual programs. Building and commissioning our national secretariat. Stabilizing the life and funding and ministry of the Church of Nigeria. And 
by 2020, March 25th, the Lord brought us to the leadership of this church. Our focus has been to maintain the achievements of our predecessors and charting the new cause for this second wave in the face of intense persecution and secular pressure upon the church. Brothers and sisters and fathers in God, the next 180 years begins now. And today being the 17th of December 2022, marking exactly 180 years, we look up to God as He takes us into the future. The next 180 years will be vital in preparing a church that remains true to the authority of the Word of God. A church that is true to her faith and the call of God to mission in a very hostile world. A church that is blameless and prepared for the returning of the King, the Lord Jesus Christ. A church rebuilding the people and structures in an aging and yet digitalized agnostic generation. The need to dig deep to our inheritance of faith and engage in intentional discipleship is very, very necessary now. The early missionaries fought the darkness of their days with the light of the gospel, the word of God, engaging in meaningful and true worship of the triune God and in the teaching and nurturing of a people through intentional discipleship, building of relationships and of character and values that are rooted in the scriptures. And up to today, the impact of what they did is still with us. We need to position this church to remain relevant to both the spiritual, economic, social, political, and other needs of the people, and yet not lose sight of our eternal calling and destination. Nevertheless, we must be mindful of some of the negative influences of our missionary heritage, one of which is poor political participation of the people. In most cases, our conception is those who are clean, don't need to be involved in the politics of our day. Politics is so worldly that those who want to be spiritual need not be involved in politics. We need to change that narrative. The earth is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. The people who dwell in it and all belong to God. And there is no authority or power or government that can be established except that which is ordained of God. And if this world and government belongs to God, we as Christians and believers must engage with the politics of our day. The church has the responsibility of discipling men and women, people of character and integrity who have godly values to engage in politics. If we refuse those who have no business leading the people will lead us and it will be a pity for the people to be led by those who hate them those who live only for themselves cultural bias 
have manifested itself in different ways. And uh, indeed, the seed of tribal and sectional sentiments are so deep among us, especially today, post a priest, post an archdeacon, elect a bishop, talk of leadership in the church, the kind of spectacle that we put on as Anglicans are spectacles that are tainted with tribals and sectional sentiments. This ought not to be in the church of God, if indeed we are the new people of God for the new dawn. Our prayer is that the Lord will help us to allow the Lord to be the Lord of his church and the God of our generation. There is what I call the Anglican inherent or tacit attitude. We are so much hard on ourselves, but very lenient and accommodating to others, even those that are so different from us. Our respect for authority and the need of working together to be united to achieve common goal is fast eroding. And permit me to point out the first thing that Baboko pointed out. The unity of working together to make sure that we pull together so that we can grow and remain a united church that has impact in our generation. And as we look into the next 180 years, our prayer is that the Lord God Almighty who has brought us thus far will take us into the future and his name shall be glorified. You are welcome.